the seventh day of December 2022. I'm Dana Durnford, and I'm also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org. And it always takes us almost a minute to get up to speed, which is pretty good. I hope you had a good day. Unless you're with the nuclear industry. Of course, the International Atomic Energy Agency. And a credible betrayal. Their legacy is something else. The latest, greatest monster at the International Atomic Energy Agency, Raphael Grossi. Reactor 1 blew up, caught fire, blew up. Reactor 2 caught fire and blew up. Reactor 3, which is this one right here, Reactor 4 caught fire and blew up. And all of them lost their reactor cores and their fuel pools. There's eight fuel pools. Uh, instead of asking for academics and nuclear corporations, they ask for the victims of society. Where's the fuel pools, which were at the top of these 190-foot buildings? And so there's two fuel pools, because you don't have a repository. These things, which is 70 of them in the United States, are stuffed with reactor cores right above the reactors. So if you have an event, you're going to lose decades of reactor cores. Truly the worst concept imaginable, and it's on purpose. That's the stump of reactor four. That's the stump of reactor three. So you can believe the lies if you want to, but you, you can't deny the facts. And the facts are... Really something, no, nothing like this has ever been attempted. Yale University, probably the most prestigious alleged uh, institution worldwide, and the professor says all of humanity will be threatened for thousands of years if the rods at Reactor 4 fuel pools touch. Now it's clear that the fuel pools are gone, but they took it to a whole different level. You have the most prestigious institution hyping it up, that they're trying to get the rods out of fuel pools. And you have all the media worldwide pretending they're in the fuel pool, pretending they're in a pool that doesn't... What I'm standing is on top of what used to be reactor building number four. The whole of this building was blown apart by a huge explosion. We are here inside Reactor 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was severely crippled during the earthquake and tsunami of 2011. ...of the decommissioning work taking place here in Reactor 4. At the end of our tour, we were checked for radiation exposure. In four hours, I received the equivalent of less than a chest x-ray. 1,500 highly radioactive fuel rods inside this pool. They've got to move them outside of this reactor. Okay, so... Another um, academic says, David Suzuki, Fukushima's the most terrifying situation you can imagine. He's seen a paper that says, bye-bye Japan, and evacuate the North American West Coast if Unit 4 goes, perpetrating that lie, right? Uh, rain with 20 million particles of radioactive iodine is just one of the many different isotopes and studies that were produced shown the radioactive fallout. This is a model from France of 16 days of radioactive fallout when the model stops. So the whole, this was based on venting, not based on the actual meltdowns. 60 and older should prepare to die at the Fukushima plant. So don't go turning people like Helen Callicott She's going to pretend it looks like the building to the left instead of the right. 
Let me ask you this. Uh, you've said that uh, if the spent fuel pool in number four collapses, that you would evacuate your family from Boston. Do you think we would ever know the truth of what's going on there? And the reason I ask is because we've seen coverage in the uh, national news media here in the United States from ABC News and others that uh, take video cameras in saying that they're being given exclusive access to number four in the removal of the fuel rods, which is said to have begun. Uh, and, and what we see in the, the video being shared here in America is pristine, a pristine interior building. It doesn't look like a building in which the top blew off in a hydrogen explosion. The Japanese are very tidy people and they have by robot control and by human beings removed the debris from the top of building four and it does look pristine. Of course it doesn't. It looks like the picture to the right. Arnie Gunnarsson, I put him up with a pulser to S Reactor 4. Now, I built the division I ran, built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. And Unit 4 it has always been my biggest concern. If you watched our website, on the very first week of the accident, I was saying that if Unit 4 were to catch fire, you'd have to evacuate Tokyo. So which building do you think Reactor 4 is? The one to the right or the one to the left? Um, let me double check the volume. Ernie Gunnarsson. Um, the Unit 4 was, um, uh, was damaged twice. It was damaged by, by a st all of the earthquakes that occurred, and it was also uh, damaged by a series of explosions over um, the first week or two of the, of the accident. So the, the, the building is structurally weakened. Now, Tokyo Electric's acknowledged that. They went in in, uh, in May and June of last year. This is more than a year ago, and put an enormous number of extra structural supports directly under the fuel pool to keep the bottom of the pool from breaking through. So, you got Helen Caldercott saying it looks perfect and it doesn't, it's not destroyed. You got Ernie Gunnarsson claiming that they went in and put an enormous amount of support under a fuel pool that doesn't exist. You've got all kinds of media pretending they're in a building that don't exist. You, you need to wake up. It's time to grow up. You're in real trouble. The whole planet's in trouble because you won't wake up, because you won't use your voices. Because you, you won't draw a line. And you talk to talk to all your friends. And you don't put up with shit from anybody. And yet you're letting your planet die and everything you hope and dreams for your loved ones die with it. You need to wake up. It's time to grow up. I've done research expeditions year after year from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska for four to five months at a time. I'll show you five pictures that hopefully changes your life. The pictures to your left are 2011. The pictures to your right are 2014, 15, 16, 17. So what's more important, nuclear or all those species to your left? Because nuclear exterminated them. You need to wake up. It's time to grow up. It's time, it's time to make a stand. It's okay to make a stand. It's okay. You're just being honest. You don't have to lie. You don't have to fabricate anything. I provide you with all the education, the documentation you'll ever need. You can beat them in any court. And they're exterminating, they're exterminating your planet. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to make a stand? When are you going to make a stand? It's time to make a stand. It's the right thing to do. It's the moral and ethical thing to do. U.S. calls radiation extremely high. Sees Japan nuclear crisis worsening. 
I just I got a couple of headlines we didn't finish covering last night. We're just going to cover it tonight. And then we got a lot of news to get through. So look at all the slaves. They're checking them allegedly for radiation, but once your Geiger counter gets put gets shocked, you need to get it recalibrated. And I can guarantee you that these people were not taken care of. Americans were advised by their embassy to evacuate a radius of 50 miles from the nuclear meltdown. So this is five days, this is day six, day five, March the 16th, when the last known explosion happened. Look at one of the names there as the author is Matthew Wald, a perpetual lawyer for the Breakthrough Institute and in the, the New York Times before that. A, a despicable lawyer, a heartless lawyer, like Helen Callicott and Christopher Busby and, and Arnie Gunnison that he fed to you constantly. He said, American officials believe the damage to at least one cripple reactor was much more serious than Tokyo's acknowledged. I showed you the pictures. And he advised Americans to stay further away from the plant than the perimeter is established by the lunatic scum Japanese. Jasko's most startling assertion was that, which was the, the head of the NRC at the time of the United States, was that there was little or no water in the pools. Now, when you say there's no water in the pool, it meant it's melting down, you have a massive event. The, the, the fuel rods are coated in zirconium. The zirconium exposed to air will dead, basically catch fire and detonate. It'll produce the hydrogen. That's why they had the explosions from the meltdowns. It was confirmation of a meltdown. That's what an explosion is at a nuclear reactor. Leaving the fuel rods stored, they're exposed and bleeding radiation into the atmosphere. This was a catastrophic, not bleeding, not hemorrhaging, but a catastrophic detonation and continuous ongoing meltdowns that are still happening today. These people that were worried went to get checked by people that couldn't check them. So we cannot confirm whether there's water left or not in the spent fuel pool at Reactor 4. Now, he's an expert, and of course he can. On the 16th, despite the fact that that's just five days, they had satellites. They had drones hanging over this place, taking real footage and high-grade, high-quality pictures that were available to them instantly. This was a huge event. Jasko, because we know that stuff was there because they had a tsunami a few days before that and, that, and that stuff was positioned already there and now was focused. And so it obviously would have focused in on the reactors. Jasko reintegrated his earlier statement and added the commission representatives from Tokyo confirmed that the pool at number four was empty. That's that kind of a, like, the first part of it where, you know, there was speculation was absurd, but that's how the media done that on purpose to you. When they say they confirmed number four was empty, I showed you number four, right? I showed you Helen Calicott. I showed you Ernie Gunnison claiming that is not, that is intact and the building is perfect. All kinds of other medias claiming the same thing. Why do you think they went to that extreme? That's an extreme to tell a lie. Why, why would you do that? Well, I showed you the research expedition, some of the pictures from it. So Tokyo Electric and other officials in Japan had confirmed that the fuel pools is empty. So that that's the end of that argument, right? No, wrong. I showed you how they faked it for several years later and still today. And also stress the radiation fields. But remember, this is on day five of the tsunami, the last day of detonations. We're going to make it very difficult to continue having people working at the plant. 
the high radiation could only be caused by releases. If the American analyst is accurate, and emergency crews at the plant have been unable to keep the spent fuel pool at the inoperative reactor properly cool, it needs to remain covered with water at all times, at all times, because as soon as the oxygen comes in contact with it, it catches fire and burns at 1,800 degrees. Then the reactor fuel catches inside of it, the pellets catch fire, and they burn at 9,000. That boils the water away. Imagine trying to boil a kettle at 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures. <laughs> Radiation levels can make it difficult not only to fix the problem at reactor 4, but to keep servicing any other problem reactors at the plant. And so just a single reactor melting down means you can't go near the other reactors. But you had four reactors and eight fuel pools. And each fuel pool had decades of reactor cores because they're just as volatile as the ones that are in the reactors. They're still splitting the atoms. That's why they're in a pool of water, which, by the way, is hemorrhaging into your environment each day. Uh, uh, absurd amounts of isotopes. This is why most nuclear plants are surrounded by farms, because they hate your guts. They've been at work exterminating you for 80 years. It's time to fight back. Time to make a stand. Time to gut up. You're the hero. Not your neighbors, you are. It's your call. It's your responsibility. It's your watch. You're with the knowledge. In the worst case, experts say workers could be forced to vacate the plant altogether they were, and the fuel rods in the reactors and spent pools would be left to melt down, which they did, as I showed you earlier in all the pictures. JASCO, who's the head of the non-regulatory agency, also known as Nuclear Regulatory Agency, said that the peak levels reported there would be lethal within a fairly short period of time. He's talking about a minute. Once it melts down, you got a minute. You're talking about a million sieverts, and three sieverts is a lethal dose. So what is a million? He added that another spent fuel puller reactor, three, might also be losing the water, could soon be in the same condition. And it was, and, but they faked it. And so I showed you the evidence earlier. So that was reactor three. There's nothing left to the building. It's just a destroyed stump. So do you think the building over there, that kind of explosion left anything intact? Is there anybody that gullible? That's being honest, I should say. If you're honest, then you understand the truth. If you're not honest, I don't know what's wrong with you. I've told everyone within 20 kilometers, which should have been a couple of hundred kilometers, including Tokyo, to evacuate, and those 20 to 30 kilometers to take shelter. Taking shelter is not an option, but if the plumes have multiple sieverts, going out into it is not an option. It's an idiot technology guaranteed to exterminate you, and you are sitting there allowing it to happen. It's time to make a stand. Well, maps of the plumes of radiation being given off by the plant show an elongated cloud stretching across the Pacific. It's a continuous plume. This is day six, by the way, we're talking about. This is day 20, another model for you. I showed you another model from France earlier, right? American officials said it would be so dissipated by the time it reached the west coast of the United States would not pose a health risk, health threat. It was 20 million atoms per liter of rainfall of iodine-131, which meant there was 10 times more 132 and 30 times more 133 and 31 times more iodine-129 which happens to have a 15 million year half-life, by the way, there was 220 million atoms out of an Ottawa study of iodine-129. So yeah, it, it absolutely dissipated, and 
it was still lethal to all the insects and birds and animals and mammals. And I showed you the research expedition, some of the pictures from it earlier. They're available at my site, thenuclearproctologist.org. After Japan plans for more nuclear power plants are all but over. And now this year, because of Chernobyl, Russia and Chernobyl and taking over a power plant in Ukraine, the public relation firms have don't waste a crisis attitude and have promoted nuclear to the point where it's revolting. Japan's unfolding disaster only shovels dirt on the nuke's grave. Ow. Japan raises Fukushima crisis levels to the same as Chernobyl. April the 12th, a month later, these reactors, each of them, um, are 100 times more powerful than the one in Chernobyl. Not counting the fuel pools. which makes them basically a thousand times more uranium plutonium than was at Chernobyl. That's important for coming up in a moment, by the way. Japan raised the severity of the nuclear crisis at a stricken Fukushima plant to the highest level, putting it on par with Chernobyl, which even today they're alleging is the world's worst nuclear disaster in order to downplay what Fukushima is. And it's disgusting. It's unequivocally despicable. It shows just pure callousness for your future and for your loved ones and your friends and your families and the species. Officials said that radiation leaks were still far lower than those experienced during, uh, and I already showed you, and that's simply not true. And it's an absurd betrayal. Japan raises the levels the same April the 12th, 2011 which is a month after, 21st, was it? 12th, so that's exactly one month after the tsunami. And on the same, and the 12th was when reactor one blew up in, in the 11th, on uh, March 11th rather. March 12th was when number one blew up. Right at this moment, we're still trying to control this accident and nuclear reactor is not stable. Spokesperson for the Japan's Nuclear Industrial Safety Agency, non-regulatory agencies, because they don't regulate, they, they call themselves regulatory agencies, but they're not. And the evidence is overwhelming that they're not. Said the decision to raise the action level seven was delayed by a month, almost. And measurements of radiation around a stricken plant. And it infuriates me these types of lies, by the way. Here's an American's model of dispersals based on 40 days. And so when the model ends, it's 40 days later. And I skimmed through it. So this dwarfs Chernobyl, and this was based on venting. 11.7 indicates a major radiation really potentially cause environmental health problems over a wide area. Try the entire planet, as you'll see coming up. Disaster previous been rated level five, same as Three Mile Island. Which and just ignore everything else. Just on that alone, the nuclear industry should be dissolved, right? It doesn't have a right to exist when it's telling that kind of lie. Let alone the the horrific other lies that have already. Showed you. Japan has expanded the evacuation zone too little too late because of the high accumulations of radiation. There's towns down there they didn't evacuate that are absurd numbers. Like Fukushima City. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yukio Ndano, a disgusting maggot an absolute abomination of a human, said the change showed the scope of the disaster and assisted the impact of radiation breaches at Fukushima were less severe than Chernobyl. He spent every waking moment doing interviews vehemently denying meltdowns, vehemently denying contamination, vehemently denying all species of the planet a chance to exist. 
He disarmed the entire population whenever he spoke. It was a horrific. And there's thousands of these people in the nuclear industry on top of that, just like that betrayal. The change in the level reminds us the action is big. I apologize to the residents of Erie, the people of Japan, international community. F apologize, you, sh you should be hung for what you've done over and over and over. You're, you're a despicable example of a human. You're a revolting example of what a human is. What you've done is unforgivable. It's absolutely unforgivable. You're a disgusting parasite on our planet. You're a hideous monster. He added, what's different here from Chernobyl actions? We have not yet seen a direct impact on the health of the people as a result of the nuclear accident. And so pe people like that don't have a right to be on your planet. And if you ever grow up and get your act together, you'll understand it. I'm not talking to my supporters. I'm talking to those who wonder, boy, you, you need to wake up. You, you need... You need to gut up. You need to get some serious courage. You need to make a stamp because we are in real trouble. This is a planet killer. It does it in increments over a few decades, but we're well underway. The action itself is big, but we will make as our first priority our utmost effort to avoid health impacts on people. Well, that can't be done. You can't avoid what's already taken place. This is a 20-day model of the fallout. How do you avoid that? Murray Genix, a nuclear industry specialist, San Diego State University in California, told writers that the Fukushima disaster was well below the scale of Chernobyl. That, should, that creature should be locked up. In, in the worst conditions, forever. He doesn't have a right to ever walk free again, that person doesn't, and neither does the university and the dean of the university that let him get away with it. It's nowhere near the level Chernobyl was terrible, it blew and they had no containment, and they were stuck. I showed you the pictures, there's no containment at Fukushima. These reactors are pure uranium, pure plutonium. They're infinitely bigger with decades of reactor cores at the top of the building and fuel pools that are also lost. And it's people like that and those universities is why we have lost all the species. And we have lost the species. Like you can't, if you're not familiar with it, we have lost the species. There's no way to get them back from what happened because of Fukushima. The containment has been holding, he claimed, and the only thing that hasn't is the fuel pool that caught fire. Again, if you're a nuclear expert and the fuel pool has caught fire, you know that's multiple reactor cores melting down immediately. You're not naive. You're not gullible. The law has never stopped. They, they started immediately. They, ve they come out and relentlessly denied there was any meltdowns. It's absolutely unimaginable that people like that, uh, creatures like that exist on our actual planet, that that kind of evilness can actually exist. Fukushima's meltdowns could be template for nuclear terrorism. Speaking of evil, Expert says Fukushima is a completely different story to Chernobyl. I'm going to play that clip. He's from a university, Hanover, Professor George, George Steinhauser. I take it a load of this creature. According to the experts, this accident is without common measure with Chernobyl. Chernobyl, for example, has released a huge amount of plutonium and americium, so Chernobyl will be contaminated forever. Fukushima is a completely different story, because what Fukushima released is basically radioactive cesium. The cesium-137 has a half-life of 30 years. 
What a revolting, disgusting parasite to say that. Plutonium-239 releases from Fukushima were 23,000 times higher than previously announced. And the previous announcement created plutonium-239 plumes covering the entire planet. And that the Fukushima radiation is still circling the globes, the globe and the consistently rising a 40-day cycle. And the Neptunium-239 decays 100% to plutonium-239. And this is the Neptunium-239 dispersions. I forget how many days the decay is. I could probably find it pretty quick, though. Just give me a second. I got it. 239. Oh, I'm sorry. We want a Neptunium 239. I'll bring it up on the screen for you in a second here. We want a Neptunium-239, Neptunium. Yeah, right by Plutonium. 237, 239. Its half-life is only 2.3 uh, days. It decays to 239 Plutonium. And 239 plutonium has a 24,000 year half life. Right, because they like, they like to say Neptunium 239 or whatever, or because they don't want to say plutonium. So that's the model from TEPCO of the, the releases of Neptunium. That's the model of the releases of plutonium. And the problem was the Neptunium decays to plutonium in two, less to, just after two days. The lethal threat from Fukushima highly radioactive water is flowing into the Pacific. Flowing. That's a great word, by the way. I say hemorrhaging, but flowing is true. CC remains dispersed throughout the water column from the surface to the ocean floor. That's 2012. And from the surface to the upper troposphere. Fukushima hospital workers say five out of seven babies born with birth defects, Down syndrome, or lost by miscarriages. TEPCO began coating the seafloor with cement mixtures because the detonations threw fuel assemblies directly into the ocean. South Dakota's nuclear waste war. South Dakota got some serious, scary secrets for the last 40 years. They had a governor who was conspiring to ship nuclear waste, high-level nuclear waste, into South Dakota. And there was a, a pig farm there that they were, they got the laws changed so they can put toxic waste on it. <laughs> the whole story is crazy, uh, it's worth reading. There's two of them. Guess the South Dakota nuclear war began 40 years ago. That was part one of the story. And this one is part two of the story. And both of them lays out how the government done everything it could to make it easy to dump nuclear waste in South Dakota, they changed all the rules to accommodate them. The government done everything it can to make sure it poisons your futures forever. Piercing Janklow's Iron Curtain of Secrecy. Oh yeah, did they, 
they changed the rules so you couldn't get access to uh, freedom of information to hide what they were up to. It's really something. I'm not going to try to go through it. It's just way too complicated. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a rare example of investigative journalists uh, caused by people like myself. Eventually, they couldn't deny it anymore, and they were forced because it, the other groups had already got some traction. You're talking 40 years ago, right? Praise for nuclear energy is eye-popping. Letter to the editor. The cost increase mentioned from 58 to to $100 a megawatt for nuclear is eye-popping. So why is political support for nuclear power projects so strong despite the huge difference in cost between nuclear and renewable? Wind is less than a third of the current nuclear estimate. The best one is geothermal. Why would you use anything else? So geothermal first, back it up with tidal energy because they're both guaranteed 24 hours a day, seven days a week for thousands of years. And, you know, they're, they've been working on nuclear fusion for 50 years. Each year is billions and billions of dollars trying to solve the riddle. But they're spending nothing on geothermal, which is right under everybody's feet and is accessible because we now have the technology, no matter how deep it is, to assess it, to get access to it. So you can build your geothermal at your gas, oil, coal, and nuclear plants. When it's finished, turn off the gas, oil, coal, and disgusting nuclear and turn on your geothermal and walk away. And 50, 60 years down the road, when you want to upgrade it, you build a new geothermal plant. When it's up and ready, then you turn off one and turn on the new one. But they're right about the cost. They're extraordinary. And geothermal is the cheapest on top of that. The tech, and it's the quickest to implement, and there's no toxic uh, materials. The technological demands of wind and solar are child's play compared to nuclear, and they operate a tiny, tiny fraction of the risk. How did my video do last night? Uh, 56 seconds, 2 hours 14, 56, and today it's 2 hours 15 and 1. So I've got 5 seconds longer. Every one of my videos get longer after 12 hours exactly. And that's, by the way, when my comments will show up exactly 12 hours later. The Empire has no clothes. Have our weapons brought us peace? No weapons in space, which is what my organization, the Nuclear Proctologists, we're a think tank, and we advocate absolutely don't, not putting man-made nuclear in the space because it never... It doesn't come from space. It's created by the humans. The sun doesn't create the elements from a nuclear reactor. They create the elements from the periodic table. Part of a small group of people who protest our nation's nuclear weapons program at Vanderburg Space Force Base, Space Force, Central Coast of California, It periodically fires unarmed ICBMs 4,200 miles across the Pacific to a tiny uh, island on an atoll in the Marshall Islands, still using the Marshall Islands. Disgusting. It just shows you this unbelievable contempt for humanity. One statement in the C-section, the website is down and the ballistic missile submarines are on constant patrol with enough firepower to make just one submarine the sixth most powerful nuclear power in the world, and it, they can't even use them. If you use them, you can't surface. Should it be a crime? Should it be a crime? I'll bring it up here in a second. Should it be a crime? I got to bring that back up first. We're getting there. Bear with me. 
Should it be a crime to poison or kill humans with radiation as currently it's not? I'll bring that up. Protester, an ex-candidate, to plead guilty to seeking nuclear material but would not get prison under the deal. Won't get prison. A noted Madison protester, former congressional candidate, who was arrested last year after FBI agents said they caught him trying to buy radioactive material online purposely to kill someone, will plead guilty Friday to charges against him, will not serve any time under a plea agreement that he reached with the FBI. He was originally charged with attempting to possess radioactive material with the intent to cause death or serious bodily injuries, essentially a nuclear terrorism charge, he tried to buy polonium-210 on the dark web, which only the government would have access to. And that makes make it appear the government killed him by using the substance, substance only the government should have access. His lawyers, Bugney and Myers, filed a series of motions to dismiss the indictment against him, asserting that nuclear terrorism charge under which he was charged is unconstitutional. You know why it's unconstitutional? Because Congress lacks the authority to criminalize poisoning with radioactive substances. So Congress and parliaments worldwide don't have the authority. Only the nuclear regulatory agencies have the authority to make it illegal to poison you with radiation. So how come your government doesn't have the authority to make it illegal to poison you is a question that is beyond important. It shows you the criminality of the nuclear industry. Should it be a crime to poison and kill humans with radiation as currently it's not illegal to poison you? And Congress doesn't have the authority to make it illegal to poison you. Back to that story, the nuclear triad, current section of the Department of Defense websites, especially as we stand at the threshold of a nuclear Armageddon. That's all they want, just destruction. They don't want a future. They just want to kill everything. Nuclear industry is well underway. They don't know how to do anything but that. Japan's TEPCO was suspending exca excavation of the Fukushima nuclear sewage. Nuclear sewage. Nuclear sewage. This is water they poured over the reactor core, they're claiming. Then they're going to suck it up, they claim. And they're going to filter it. And then it goes into the tanks where they're going to store it. Um, the problem is that you're talking about two sieverts of beta per liter and three sieverts is a lethal dose. So the filters become so radioactive after a few minutes not, not to mention the hoses that's bringing it there. The filters, if they were actually able to do it, you can't get close enough. You can't, you, like you got to pour in a massive amount of water over the reactor cores. They're claiming they're pouring over 130 tons a day, which is the same amount of water as a half-inch garden hose will pump out in 24 hours. So they're saying multiple reactor cores and fuel pools that have melted down or blew up and they're pouring water over the buildings, but it's only equal to a half-inch garden hose split four ways. Because that's what 130 tons is. You can look it up yourself. The problem with the tanks is that if you fill up the tanks with the water, you can't fill up another tank because you can't get back on the site. You can't filter it because you can't get back into the filtration. And that the, the Surrey system for the cesium, the Arriva system for the water filtration, and the Alps systems 
weren't never were never turned on in the first three three and three and a half years because you couldn't get it to work because it's lethal doses. It was meant to make you look away. The tanks, you could fill them up with just one reactor six times a day. An operating reactor would produce enough water to fill them up six times a day. They had a thousand tanks in 2013. They got a thousand tanks in 2022. How many did you fill up in the last nine years? You're being hoodwinked. You, you need to wake up. You need to gut up. You, you need to make Earth's last stand. This is humanity's last stand. You can pretend this is not happening. I can't. I got the evidence I already showed to you repeatedly at the beginning, and I'll show it to you many more times each day. According to Japan's... Uh, news agency Tokyo Electric Power Company, which is not a decommissioned authority, will soon suspend the excavation of the submarine tunnel used for discharges, calling it nuclear sewage. We've seen a few medias do that over the last couple of years. It's a despicable, it's a despicable betrayal to suggest something like that. From the Diachi's nuclear power plant, the water is constantly hemorrhaged into the ocean. Just bear with me. Now, I showed you models covering the entire planet in 16 days. That doesn't exclude the oceans, right? But hang on. This was a German study. I'm going to play for you. Kim Jill reports. May be worse than thought. Uh, studies from last year indicate that radioactive water will contaminate the entire Pacific Ocean in just six years. Kim Minji reports. This graphic shows the gradual contamination of the Pacific Ocean due to leaks of radioactive water from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. The simulation, which was run by a German marine research institute, shows the entire Pacific waters being polluted by radioactive water in just six years. Six years. Now, you got to remember, they faked the building. We went out and done research expeditions. The species were exterminated. I showed you that at the beginning. And... Why the model might take six years the airborne plumes can do it in just over two weeks Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Jeez, it's so busy day, still never got out of the house again today. So the Surrey system didn't work. The Arriva system, 2014 in August, was kept out of operation for the last three years. The Arriva system was kept out of operation for the last three years. By 2015, this is 2014, they admit that the system has not worked. The French water filtration system, they emit after three years, didn't work. And so the reason they got tanks, he said, was because the, the water comes, gets sucked up, goes through the filtration, and then into the tanks. 
If you fill the tank up with the raw water, which is, they might have actually done originally, but that's that was a that was an idiotic thing to do because it's a lethal doses all over the site, and you have major earthquakes going on and aftershocks. So a complete 100% deceit. The groundwater bypass operation had no effect. They alleged they're going to build a wall for a billion dollars, and they didn't do it because first off, you can't build a fence that's going to keep radiation out. Radiation is not like cattle or sheep or something where you build a fence. The ice wall, of course, not going to work. Why would you build an ice wall instead of a real wall? Because you didn't have to pay for it. Taxpayers did. So they weren't serious about coming up with solutions. See? Because there was, the event had already taken place. And they knew it. They, they had to keep the lies that they told originally alive. And last night we covered a lot of them, right? And at the beginning of this show we covered a couple more stories from the original. So from the very get-go, they lied. And it was reinforced by institutions and universities and medias worldwide that pretend that they were in the buildings, in the fuel pools that don't even exist. Nuclear is off the table in Australia. I think that's Australia. Opposition nuclear power is ill-founded. Popular state premier is preparing to make some powerful enemies over their ill-founded opposition to nuclear energy in Australia. Yeah, it's Australia. The Prime Minister of Australia said it's off the table. And so the pro-nuclear community have a lot of powerful allies, and they brought them out and went into attack mode because they, they don't have any conscience. N nuclear is the animosity equivalent of the devil. It fulfills everything that the proverbial devil should fulfill, right? It brings nothing but endless, um, it's an extinction machine. It's an omnicide, it wipes out all species. It's well underway, it's time to fight back. You got no time to lose. You got to bring the fight to them. Ontario can cut emissions 85%, save 9.5 billion by replacing gas plants with efficiency. Try wrapping your mind around that statement then that would be applicable to every other country, obviously. Ontario power emissions to rise 400% after Ford cancels hundreds of renewable projects. Over 800, 758 renewable energy projects were cancelled to promote nuclear. So there was no opposition to nuclear in Canada. They got rid of all of it in Ontario where all the reactors are basically to cipher a couple. That's a shocking revelation. See, and we covered that when it happened, remember? Canada can hit 100% zero emission electricity by 2035 without nuclear, the report finds. And if you use geothermal, then we can have a future. The minute you use geothermal, by the way, we don't need war anymore. We don't need empire anymore. Because the empire is used to get oil, see, and commodities for the industries, for energy. That's what they've been doing for many, many decades since, you know, since we've been lighting light bulbs, basically, building empire. Can it achieve 100% zero emission electricity? Well, then so can any other country that prioritizes renewable energy, storage, energy efficiency, interprovincial transmissions. Solves your, your problem, your solutions are simple. You gotta, you gotta fight back against this nuclear genocide machine. See the censorship's over the top again tonight? Should it be a crime to poison and kill humans? 
But radiation, because currently it's not. Now, I, I ran the story earlier. A guy was charged with nuclear terrorism. His lawyers filed a motion to dismiss the indictment because it was unconstitutional, because the Congress lacks the authority to criminalize poisoning with radioactive substances. So we got a poll. Should it be a crime to poison and kill humans with radiation? Because it's not. And because it's not, that's what they're doing. And, and I mean, they're in overdrive motion, by the way. 24 people on my show. I'm killing it again tonight, am I? That's censorship. There's probably 25 people on my show. It's only showing 24. I got to do a show a week where I'm just wrapping shit on a stick so I can get 30,000 viewers, right? But because I'm showing you only facts, only documentation that nobody else on the planet is going to bring to you in a reasonable format, or have the conversation at all, for a fact. There is no nuclear shows. We're the only one to ever attempt it, and we've paid a horrific price for it. Last month, Montana's largest wind farm with a nameplate capacity of 750 megawatts, nearly equal to a small nuclear power plant, went online and began generating electricity for neighboring Washington state. 52% of South Dakota's electricity comes from wind power, uh, Japan's farm products shipment resumes in disaster hit Fukushima town. About four years ago, Fukushima announced that they're shipping twice as much as they did pre-Fukushima meltdown out of their country. Canada is one of the worst offenders. So we covered, we've done an entire show dedicated on this I'm not sure if it was Sunday night or Monday night. Farm product shipment resumes in Futabar, which is two kilometers from ongoing multiple fuel pools and reactor cores meltdowns. Two kilometers. In an abandoned community that's used as a repository for radioactive waste in soil, surrounded by soil that is absurd doses, And he's ready to ship broccoli, so soon it'll be everything else. Now, he drives back and forth each day. He has to drive back and forth to his farm a couple times a week, rather, because no one lives in that community because it's too radioactive. So that's, how is that even possible? that they would do that. And how is it possible that the media would promote it? How is it possible that the journalists write the stories don't know the difference? Well, it's not. It's just utter contempt for all humans and all species. Japanese government shameless nuclear power flip-flop is utterly irresponsible this was an editorial out of a major media in Japan. The Japanese government has unveiled its plans to replace nuclear reactors. Now, when Kushida first announced that about six, seven weeks ago, the mining companies and the stock markets took over the headlines for several days to promote uranium stocks which was absurd, it was an absurd betrayal. Let me see. Behind the about-face government's judgment that atomic power is indispensable to both decarbonize, decarbonize. See, that's, you can't decarbonize by using nuclear. It's the most resource-intensive industry in history. Its final product is small compared to uh, 
some commodities like coal, oil, and gas, right, obviously. But in order to produce it, in order to build a facility, in order to maintain it, in order to run it, I like to see the power bill at these facilities because they both, they need two gas, oil, coal plants dedicated to it. They can't run on their own power. Changing, because they, you know, after 2011, they closed the reactors, and that was supposed to be the end of it. And now all of a sudden, to, right out of the blue, promote nuclear without no national debate, national discussion is unforgivable. I mean, the media, is, which is unusual for anybody to call out the ruthless Japanese government, Envisions introducing an innovative light water reactor with better safety features that are not proven, by the way. Uh, the measures have been incorporated from the initial design phase, which you're talking about something 15, 20 years down the road. If you're lucky, as long as the French don't build it, you might be able to pull it off. Include the ability to keep cooling the reactor core with water even if the power goes out. Keep cooling the reactor core with water. So if you lose the ability to pump water, it melts down. And keeping radioactive substance contained in the event of a meltdown can't be done. These are pressured reactors. It can't be done. The reactors are expected to enter service as early as the mid-2030s, way past when you need it, which is now. Like, every time you heard the word a date from this industry, you got to attack 10 years onto it. That's just history. That's just the way it is with nuclear. It'll come in and say, oh, we can do it for one-third the price of what it's going to be. One-quarter the price, one-fifth of the price of what it's going to actually cost. Well, we can do it for that price. Or we can build it in this time. And then double that and triple that and quadruple that is the norm. Obvious contradictions inherent in nuclear power. Moving ahead with building more reactors despite... These are just kicking problems down the road. Officials speak of boost in safeties in the Fukushima accident. All five layers of walls keeping radioactive substances contained were breached. You can't guarantee anything man-made. And then the Mitsubishi and uh, major steel manufacturers in Japan have a 40-year legacy of falsifying data and particularly to nuclear plants, where some of these pieces are 700,000 pounds. And they shipped them worldwide and then had to get them back because of the flaws. Contingencies like nuclear disasters and earthquakes and tsunamis or terrorist attacks on a scale beyond all reckoning could occur. And will occur in Japan. Japan's on a fault line. We got a thousand to five thousand earthquakes a year, where they got a three thousand year history of massive tsunamis. Claiming they're going to build it from three point seven billion to seven point four billion is a absurd discrepancy. On top of that, nuclear energy is getting steadily cheaper to generate, but building a reactor costs is, well. I can't see them building anything for $7 billion. That's absurd. Sizewell in the United Kingdom is going to be over $30 billion. The original estimate was a massive $11 billion or something. And Japan government can throw all the money at the one, but they don't have the people to build it. They, they've been out of a shutdown for a decade. You know, 54 plants shut down for a decade. And then each plant got thousands of employees, right? None of them worked at Fukushima. And a prolonged financial burden on the people of Japan would be, uh, Japan would be unavoidable, which they're paying, they don't, the money's already there to, for, to keep replacing the power plants, the normal power plants or whatever. And so they, they steal the money and they leave the power plants running. So, well, we got nothing to replace it with. And this corruption now has doomed us all. 
Then there is the still unsolved conundrum of how to find and dispose of radioactive waste. It seems that the bottom of this enormous atomic money pit is an ever-expanding pile of nuclear waste that's still splitting the atoms into the environment. Right, James Lucy points out how even jellyfish have shut down nuclear power plants. And as James Lucy says, they need to pay for jellyfish suicide prevention so they don't get sucked up into the intakes, which destroy billions and billions and billions and trillions of small fish and billions of large fish each year, by the way, and turtles and everything else. The whole industry is, dis is not supposed to exist. It, its entire legacy is predicated upon extinctions of massive genocide, ecocide, omnicide machine. Only 10% of the respondents in Japan supported disgusting nuclear and 60% favored abandoning the disease factories altogether. And the government's own energy roadmap states Japan will reduce reliance on nuclear power to the greatest extent possible. It is utterly irresponsible to gradually demolish this pledge and resurrect our country's dependence on disease factories, also known as nuclear power plants. Tsunami Ravage School passes on the lessons of disaster. They didn't learn nothing. They, you know, they faked uh, meltdowns, for God's sakes. The, the, the significance is horrific. I keep forgetting to change that uh, hand. <laughs> that was just meant for a couple of stories. I like that one. I like to. Whoosh. So, a former elementary school in Nami, Nami is still a nuclear wasteland. They abandoned it for like seven years, which meant they should have abandoned it for 700 or 7,000. And then, in order to give nuclear a clean bill of health, they moved people back into the nuclear wasteland. And Nami is located between Futabar and. Um, Akuma, which are on both sides of the nuclear meltdown. And that community happens to be right there, right alongside. It's just absurd. 300 meters from the sea, 3.5 kilometers away from the museum, $50 million museum, they built within eyesight of the ongoing multiple nuclear meltdowns to trick people into going back to the prefecture so they can get some statistics. Oh, well, we had people visiting the province. They were tricked and deceived and manipulated into going there to see a museum. There was also built to pass on lessons from the nuclear accident. Like, You know, i got to warn Japan and the rest of the planet that lying about every facet uh, is the worst way forward. It's the best way backwards. It's the best way to destroy in your own country in your lifetime. The complicated politics of nuclear power. Look at this. They're claiming that's a small modular reactor. That's 10 stories high. 100 feet high, small modular <laughs> reactor. I got some real balls to call it the small modular reactors. Russia built it on a decrepit barge that they, they welded and fixed and painted. They put the reactors together with spare parts from uh, decommissioned reactors. Like, see, a small modular reactor is something that you can fit in the back of a transport truck. You, you need, like, several hundred transport trucks. 
And if you have a uh, tsunami up there, guess what's going to happen to that? There's already a small modular reactor upper in operation in Rusky Land, a floating one on a ship off the Arctic coastal town of Stupid. These are not small modular reactors. So when they talk about the complicated politics of nuclear, they're talking about the complicated politics are the relentless laws they told the average person can't write an article. They got to send it to the nuclear industry to get it corrected to account for all the laws. And so when you see a story about nuclear, it's usually written by lobbyists. And then it's sent to the media, the journalists that are in the media will put their name on it and pretend they wrote it, and that's how they make their paychecks as, as public relation firms, a.k.a. lobbyists, a.k.a. scum. China planned nuclear oil and has taken shape with the installation of its first reactor. Interesting engineering, I think that was. Yeah, interesting. They're pro-nuclears to get. You get any more pro-nuclear in them, and you'll probably get a job as the Prime Minister of Japan. EDF extends nuclear outage by up to 42 days. Uh, 4.6 gigawatts. My voice is starting to lose it. Robotasson. Oh, my goodness. Thank goodness for Robotasson. Yuck. But it does work. I knew I should have took some before I went low, but I didn't. But it actually works. Uh, Buckley's don't work. Fisherman's friends work for a little while. But uh, Robitussin usually works for a few hours. EDF, uh, Electric de France, which is France's nationalized company because it went bankrupt, basically. Reactor at Tihan's nuclear power plant knocked off line. I can't even remember where that one is towed. What the hell is that to? Bangladesh or... No. In November, it was closed briefly due to health and safety concerns by the Federal Agency for Nuclear Control. Well, really, what happened? The problem was said to be not dramatic in themselves, but not permissible at a nuclear plant. Of course, I'm not going to tell you what that is. Arms sales uh, last year reached uh, $560 billion dollars. But they had no money to put on renewables. I cut off the headline on that one, I think. Yeah, I cut it off. Should boost that in the TV there. The Treasury is reportedly reviewing the United Kingdom's government spending on projects such as roads, rails, and schools to boost nuclear. So they're going to cut schools and roads and rails funding so they can have nuclear power plants surrounded by farms to make sure they can poison you in your supermarkets for another 60, 70 years. Why are all nuclear power plants surrounded by farms? Was it an accident? We gotta have a poll about that one of these days. Was nuclear power plants surrounded by f farms a coincidence? I don't know. The government is reportedly planning to cut its investment in projects like rails and road infrastructure to, and schools to boost its nuclear power in the United Kingdom. Prime Minister treats South, uh, South Australia Premier nuclear energy proposal as some kind of joke. Australia, the pro-nuclear, which is illegal to have nuclear reactors in Australia, right? Uh, and Australia has been destroyed because the British influence. They got their own continent, but they're still just slaves to Britain. Prime Minister 
has in Australia is just he he laughs at anybody that's pro nuclear and tells them they're ridiculous. And he's right. And Sky News is one of the biggest offenders. It says the Prime Minister Anthony Albanese today treated South Australian Premier proposal for nuclear energy is a joke. Anthony Albanese doesn't want to understand why nuclear power now provides 10% of the world's electricity and has done so safely for decades. To say that it done it safely for decades is absurd. All the fuel pools worldwide, there's over a thousand of them, are hemorrhaging radiation into the environment because the fuel is still splitting the atom. There's no containment. That's why they want them surrounded by farms. And that's what they do. And has done that safely for decades. Somebody should grab him by the back of the head and drag him kicking and screaming into Fukushima. Albanaz says no to nuclear. Worse, he's also saying no to coal, no to gas, and other fossil fuels long term. Yeah, because geothermal and renewables, other renewables, have, uh, you know, by 2026, there's between 2020 and 2026, there's going to be 4,800 gigawatts of renewables online. That's equal to all gas, oil, coal, nuclear worldwide combined currently. And that's equal to f uh, 5,000 5, large nuclear power plants coming online six years. So by 2026, do you think that the renewable renaissance is going to stop at 2026? Or do you think it's just going to keep skyrocketing forward, changing the world for the better? And if they had to use geothermal, we would already be there. If we had to use t uh, tidal energy, we would already be there. Climate change is caused by the em uh, emissions for 80 years. All the nuclear testing, all the nuclear meltdowns. And Fukushima was the straw that broke the planet's back of emissions. Particularly the mixed oxide reactor in particular. Because the, the uh, thousand fuel pools are hemorrhaging so each fuel pool got multiple reactor cores in it. They're still splitting the same atoms as you would to power a million homes each. Those atoms are released each day into the environment through 120,000 liters in each pool as boiled off into the, the environment each day. This is why they're surrounded by farms. And so the emissions now are liberated into the environment. It's an invisible snowstorm that's pulsing energy almost at the speed of light. I almost had it 286,000 miles per second. Or 186,000 miles per second, 300,000 kilometers per second. Every second for uh, hundreds of thousands and millions of years. That's pure energy, and you can't destroy energy. So if it was a, if it was a snowstorm covering the whole planet, pulsing or snow and the snow never melts you would get it right quick right but because you can't see it or perceive it or taste it or hear it or feel it or touch it or pick it up or throw rocks at it uh, you, you think it doesn't or you you can pretend it doesn't exist but that's all you're doing and that's a serious flaw that's a serious mistake that's that's a fatal flaw in your thinking it's time to do the moral and ethical thing. Anthony Albanese's proposition is that 30 plus other countries around the world are wrong because they use nuclear, and he's right. They're turning their back on nuclear. France and the UK, we've seen built them, we've seen bills to South Korea, the UAE, plenty in China. Uh, this is an absurd assertion. France half their fleet is shut down for starters. The United Kingdom never started to build the reactors until all the other reactors are ready to come offline. So they're way too late. There's no way to have a renaissance because they can't build their own reactors. So France is building it, but France can't even fix half their fleet, which is offline. And by the time they get half of that online, it's going to be spring, and they're not going to have any water to cool the reactors that they got.
and they're gonna have to shut them down like they done last year and the year before. And the reactors that are down are down because of the Wigner effect because they're old and decrepit reactors and they've been bombarded with neutrons for so long that they're, they're calling it corrosion, it's embrittlement. And the embrittlement in a pressurized reactor at 1,000, 2,000 PSI is a stupid, idiotic combination. It's a lethal combination. Letter, no surprise at the delusion of professional protesters. This is pro-nuclear scum who seems to be smart enough all the time to write the paper and get printed, but are perpetual lawyers. He's talking about a protest in particular. She continues about the carbon footprint of the U.S. military, which is huge. It's as big as some countries. And it's not so much the carbon footprint as the resource intensive and the destruction. The military is only good at one thing, is destruction. Maybe she, would, she should focus instead on what the Russian military are doing in Ukraine. What about the other 59 conflicts worldwide? Is Russia and Ukraine the only one that matters? You arrogant piece of shit. Thanks to heaven we have a nuclear deterrent in the UK that you can't use because you don't have a UK anymore. Instead of pointlessly protesting at the military base, Maybe Angie and her irk could leave us alone and go and protest in the Red Square and see what happens. You know, uh, Mother's Day was a, a protest originally where mothers would walk silent and they were protesting their children being taken by the military and never coming back. And they wanted to know what happened to their children. And that's what Mother's Day actually is. And if you look at the legacy of the militaries worldwide, there's zero to be proud of. It's zero. It's actually zero. It should be no surprise how deluded and self-important professional, professional protesters, nobody's a professional protester, unless they're the pro-industry, agitators and nuisances like Miss Zelters are. And the person who wrote that story, jobs, not tridents, which, what are you going to, you're really going to use the nuclear bombs? You can't use them. They're pointless, but they make scumbags like whoever wrote that article a lot of money, obviously. And the Arikans, to claim that a protester doesn't have a right to protest there, that you should only protest other countries. It's people like that that should be locked up permanently. It's the people that wrote that article. And the people that published it, too. There was a scene in Indiana Jones a 2008 movie where the archaeologist is mistakenly entered a nuclear testing ground and gets in a fridge because he realizes it's about to be a nuclear test and he survives it. And whoever wrote the story is upset that that scene was in the movie. That's a pro-nuclear, if I ever heard. Saskatchewan Power is holding a small modular reactor information session for something that don't exist. There is no small modular reactors. It's just a big money grab. The renewable industry is curb stomped. All the industries, and by 2026, the you're not going to be able to deny that because you're going to have enough new renewables in a six-year period from 2020 to 2026, the equivalent of all current gas, oil, coal, and nuclear worldwide combined. That's not going to stop. That's the snowball effect at that stage. And they're doing everything to scuttle it, right? 
you know, the prices of the commodities are skyrocketing, but it's still on track. Saskatchewan Power, Crown Corporation is holding a virtual open house Wednesday for the project for reactors that don't exist, not even on paper. Canada doesn't have a single one that's approved by the non-regulatory agencies, the nuclear agencies. They're non-regulatory because they don't regulate anything. Anything, I know, but anything is how we say it on our coastlines. What are you using the technology behind the small modular reactors? Again, they're talking about safety, waste management, water use, and technology behind small modular reactors that don't even exist in order to brainwash the population in increments because that's how they've done it all their lives, see? And they want to find their friends and they want to find their foes so they can isolate their foes, find their friends so they can donate to them to keep them as friends. That's what the nuclear industry does. And then we're talking millions of dollars into the community. And you can spend it any way you want. As long as you're pro-nuclear. People from Pickering, the disease factory that is Pickering, will share their experience about living near a nuclear power facility. That's not science. That's not facts. The fuel pools of Pickering are hemorrhaging into the environment. Are they going to share how many of their loved ones died of heart problems and liver problems and lung problems and respiratory and pituitary and thyroid and adrenaline and Alzheimer's and dementia and autism, diabetes and Down syndrome? Because there's 1,800 diseases that comes out of those fuel pools into the community, not just cancer. I think what they're doing is disgusting because they know they're not needed anymore on top of that. It's despicable, and that's the word we use constantly because we're talking about nuclear. Canadian National Laboratories, a.k.a. Chalk River, helps install six new road signs letting drivers know to watch for turtles. Letting drivers know to watch for turtles. Like they kill all the species and then they put up signs, save the turtles. And they, they get people to stand up in front of the sign that gives them legitimacy. And these people should be arrested for child abuse for using their kids to help the Canadian nuclear laboratories poison the population. <laughs> Japan's agricultural exports on track for another record. <laughs> we'll get you in your supermarkets. We'll get you everywhere you go to eat and poison you. America's new B-21 bomber is a nuclear drone, folks. So it can do it unmanned and drop nuclear bombs. We might as well man it. If you're going to go nuclear and drop nuclear, you might as well put a guy in there, put an put a, uh, inbreed. Because that's what got that job to fly. These things are the inbreeds of the industry. You can't get the job as a pilot in the military unless you're an inbreed. Did you know that? That's how you get the job in the military. Is that's going to become a high ranking in the military. Is you have to come from a, a family of inbreeds to get that job. And that's why... And I mean, like in the military, you can't disobey an order. What do you mean? Of course you can if it's an unlawful order. But they get the young and the vulnerable who don't know any better and are afraid to ask questions and, and um, pick out the zombies. Remotely drop nuclear bombs, eh? Can now drop nukes remotely. It didn't tell us enough times. Maybe you should tell us a few more times. Can drop nuclears, can drop nuclears, can drop nukes. Did I mention that they can drop nukes? And uh, Northrop Gumman, uh, their legacy is horrific. They make Hitler look like a little schoolyard bully. He's capable of both stupid manned and stupid unmanned operations. 
They open the presentation by singing the national anthem, the, the um, Star Spangled Banner. Patriotic idiots. And then they had a flyby at the same time of older bombers, the B-52 and B-2 and a few other ones flew overhead as they're singing the national anthem with the military industrial complex producing their next weapons of mass destruction, next idiot machines to make sure the country has no future. They said you can destroy kids and, and water and resources everywhere worldwide. She said, I want to thank the Sh Global Strike Command for the amazing flyover. And then he switched to, um, to uh, they had an orchestra too. Orche when Shithead left the stage, orchestra music played. The whole story reads like something right out of a science fiction horror movie. They're actually proud of it. They're proud of being scum. They're proud of being the worst of the worst human humanity has to offer. Oh, small modular reactor sitting work progresses in Canada and the Czech Republic. Sitting work. So they're celebrating. They're going to go there and lay out cables for electricity and fiber optics and water and roads. And, and they don't need any permits because they're actually on Pickering Nuclear Disease Factory site. It's just 100%. They don't got any small reactors. They don't got any designs. They got the money, so they got to pretend to do something to justify giving away a bunch of money. It's, ups it's pathetic. There's no other way to describe what happened there. That's, that's actually... Look at all these useful idiots. The future home of Canada's first grid-scale small modular reactors where they don't even have a design approved, let alone in for application. Because, you know, you're looking at a million pieces of paper. It takes forever to get through all that. Then they got to make changes. Re-engineered a million pieces of paper. The whole, the whole industry is just one great big suck in all the life of each country that it, it's in. It's like the world's biggest parasites. The biggest ticks to just get on your country and suck the life out of your country. That's what nuclear is. Korea signs nuclear fuel memorandum of understanding for Poland's small modular reactors. I'm sorry for the Maria Research Reactor. This uh, memorandum of understanding is... We see so many small companies and businesses and countries signing these memorandum of understandings. They're not going to look at anything else, geothermal, nothing. Only nuclear. You got your blinders on. We're only going to look at nuclear no matter what shows up, even if it's a thousand times cheaper and better. We got our memorandum of understanding. Uh, that's just a crack dealer saying he's got the best crack. That's all they are. They're, they're disease factories. There's nothing stupider looking either than somebody getting their picture taken in the nuclear industry. There really isn't anybody stupider looking. Oh, they got an icebreaker. That's nuclear driven. Are they going to dump the reactor core in the Arctic like the last ones, I wonder? Like the Lenin? The Rus what Russia's doing with nuclear ships on the ocean is horrific. And the, and the World Nuclear News is out there promoting all of it, by the way. Ceremony held for the floating Chernobyl. Yeah, twin reactors. It's almost 600 feet long disease factory floating around on the ocean, dumping its nuclear waste all the time into the ocean. First winter cold snap tests French's power grid. <laughs> Half their fleet is down. Now, now they're in trouble. 
They got nowhere to import enough electricity to keep it running. All their eggs in one basket, and, and in the nuclear basket at that. How's our poll tonight? Should it be a crime to poison people with radiation? Because currently it's not. In March, this guy was charged with terrorism with nuclear material. His lawyers filed a series of motions to dismiss the indictment because nuclear terrorism charges under which he was charged are unconstitutional because Congress lacks the authority to criminalize poisoning with radioactive substances. It criminalizes poisoning you with radioactive substances. So should it be a crime to poison people with radioactive substances? Because currently it's not. And we got 96% of the votes. Ding, ding, ding. Bless your hearts. French uh, utility EDF, which is now nationalized, SAS electricity output dropped to a 30-year low in 2022 to a record number of nuclear reactor outages arising from corrosion, a.k.a. Wigner effect. The nuclear, this is uh, the Idaho National Laboratory, which is built on one of uh, the biggest aquifers in that part of the country. That's been polluted since the 50s, like the rest of these national laboratories all have that same attribute. That's where they build uh, reactors, the experimental reactors, right over these aquifers. So if it melts down, it goes into the aquifer to cool down. And oh, by the way, these aquifers are still supplying water to your farms and your cities. And that's something we're seeing worldwide, the exact same thing, eh? It's just a coincidence that all nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms too, Dana. That's just a coincidence. Look at the idiots from, it's from National, Idaho National Laboratory, out there in heavy wind. And you don't get much more stupider looking than somebody from the nuclear industry. It's, it's difficult to get any stupider looking than that. That's stupid in a whole new level. Ukraine presses UN watchdog, UN watchdog. <laughs> Surely you're not talking about the International Atomic Energy Agency calling them a watchdog. That's absurd. That's probably the funniest joke I heard this year and last year too, probably. United Nations Nuclear Regulator, which one? Unsclear, IRPA, the ICPP, the IAEA. They got all kinds of them. None of them have actually any authority. None of them are actually watchdogs. They're, they're the control opposition, but they're not watchdogs. Renewable energy exceeds nuclear energy coal production 2022, folks. By a big margin. New Scale, which uh, is the only company that actually has a small modular reactor design into the regulatory agencies, but is missing thousands of pieces of its million pieces of paper. So it's not actually a complete application, therefore it can't pass. And they've been in business for uh, 18 years and still no small modular reactors. How interesting. Announces fuel handling and storage rack contracts with Framatome, which is the disgusting French, which can't even fix their own reactors. And in order for new scale reactors, figuratively speaking, that is, to produce energy, they need Helion fuel, which is only available from Russia, which is uh, unbelievably enriched fuel. It's mixed oxide fuel, but it's hugely enriched. It's weapons grade, which is down blended, I think, to 16% or something. This is absurd numbers. And so these small modular reactors, if you ever actually ever do produce them, they're going to produce 35 times more serious intermediate level waste, 35 times more than a big reactor. 30 times more high level waste than a big reactor and five times more fuel rods than a big reactor when scaled up because they're so inefficient. And the way to make, try to make them a little bit efficient is to put stupid fuel 
in it that is unbelievably lethal. Once you take it out of there, you got nowhere to put that stuff. You can't go sticking that in normal fuel pools. It boils water way past anything a normal fuel pool does, which is typically 120,000 liters a day into the environment. And each liter is billions and trillions of atoms, man-made anthropogenic atoms. And then they usually surround these places, as far as you can see, with farmland, active farmland, prime farmland. Same with their dumps, by the way. And anything from Portland, Oregon, they're, they're incredible scum. I've had, I've had contact on the phone with this lot. These are scum on a whole different level. These are incredible degenerate scumbags. I've had conversations with these scum. These are arrogant. They've called me up many times over the last few years and picked a fight with me. <laughs> Which is a big mistake, obviously. I gave them what for. And fr Framatone is not even supposed to exist. Framatone, if the world knew what they were up to, the countries that they're in knew what they were actually doing, people could successfully sue them out of existence. These are degenerates. And they're going to be working with American Crane and Orano. Orano um, was started up a couple of years ago. Right? Because in France, no, France, uh, Arriva has operations worldwide. But the one in France is actually went bankrupt. And that's where Orano came from. There's still an Arriva in America, one here in Canada, one in Africa. And who knows where else? But the one in in which was supposed to handle the fuel, see, it had the contracts for the spent fuel and fuel it had the contracts um, for La Hague in France, which is the reprocessing facility, the disgusting reprocessing facility. It's so disgusting you need five hundred security guards, five hundred security guards. It's crimes against humanity to mix oxide fuel just to reprocessing. You're committing crimes against humanity. The most polluting things in human history, there's no comparison. If you can combine all pollution worldwide, it still doesn't stack up against the nuclear pollution. Cold snap sees surge in gas demand as more French nuclear power starts to come back online. Cold snap sees surge. Well, the French nuclear power plants, they just announced that they're delayed again for months. Fukushima gets ready to discharge, treat, treat it, treat it. This is Euro news. And Euro news, of course, they call nuclear green renewable technology uh, starting this January. Because there's 516 of the EU voted against, four against 500 against it being considered green. A green label, taxonomy, which meant that companies and people could invest in it and get a write-off and make money back that way. And it's a horrific, a horrific betrayal. That's what you expect out of a people that are appointed and not elected, right? And they don't even show you a picture of Fukushima. That's not even Fukushima. So why talk about Fukushima gets ready to discharge water into the sea but not even show you a picture of Fukushima? Water that touched the fuel becomes a lethal dose by the leaders. And they're saying they're going to filter everything out and the only thing left is tritium. And so in real life... Um, You can imagine what kind of dysfunctional people they actually were growing up and what their and what kind of savages and idiots their parents would have been to produce someone like that that would claim that you can filter it and anything left is going to be tritium. They had 400 tons in 2013. I'm not going to go through that story. It just makes me angry. 
Macron's French nuclear farce. Did you know that French prime minister, a French president, I should say, just went to America with a nuclear entourage trying to convince the Americans to let France build French reactors. You know, the failed reactors they got in China and Finland? Those reactors, like that one there. If you wanted to paint a picture of a complete industrial fiasco, you need only look at today's French nuclear power industry. Circus is more appropriate. French President Emmanuel Macron is still trying to sell the EPR a reactor that ended up mostly on paper to the United States. Uh, President Emmanuel Macron's renewed pitch to sell French nuclear technology to the United States. Nevertheless, this was the central purpose of the Macron's state visit to the nation's capital last week. He even brought a whole atomic entourage with him, including representatives from the state regulators, as well as cabinet members and the bankrupt French nuclear power industry. The bankrupt is right. And the backdrop to Macron's nuclear promotional tour is the most breathtaking pile of wreckage imaginable. And yet Macron, here's Macron still blatantly attempting to sell the French flagship reactor, the EPR, likely second only to the breeder reactors as the most abject failure in a nuclear power plant's history. EPR stands for Evolutionary Power Reactor. With it, France has achieved the unimaginable to send evolution in the reverse. And yet last February, just before the elections, I saw him retain his throne in the presidential palace. He announced the country would go full radioactive steam ahead. France would build 6 to 14 new EPR-2 reactors, just a new improved EPR, in the name of climate change and extend the operating license of the entire current nuclear fleet. This old decrepit fleet does half of it shut down because of embrittlement, also known as the Wigner effect from neutron bombardment. You break France would build six of the reactors. They don't have the manpower, right? With the first startup date 2035, which is ludicrous. Do you even suggest that's going to happen? And an estimated cost of 52 billion. Give you a head a shake. And when it falls off, give it a kick. The partnership will promote advanced nuclear power globally, which has a key role to play in order to reduce the global CO2 emissions. But they're the biggest emitters of pollution, period, except for the shipping industry. 15 container ships produce more pollutions than the 760 million cars worldwide. The big ships, right? The cargo ships. There's 90,000 of them on the ocean currently at any given time, which is around 42 trillion people on the planet every day in pollution. And they're exempt from the fabled carbon. Half of the country, which, by the way, no carbon, no plants, no humans, no animals, no insects, no birds, no trees, no forests, no land, just rocks. There will be nothing on the planet if you don't have carbon. You can't have bacteria, you can't have fungus. Half of the country's 56 reactor fleet is still offline. It's a crisis that has persisted for months and no end in, in sight. Now they're going to take over the welding schools to produce people to help fix the reactors, apparently. Do, do you want to see, you're going to go inside the reactors that have been running for 30 or 40 years. Do you get what I'm talking about? You're going to get absurd doses of radiation. You're going into a radioactive environment that they're going to convince you is not radioactive. It's impossible you're inside a reactor where the reason the reactor is broken down is from neutron bombardment. The stuff you're going to fix is a direct result of bombardment. So you've got to go in there in that zone, that incredible radioactive zone, and they're shipping people in worldwide because they don't want to pay the health care down the road. 
Closed for safety reasons after discovery of severe corrosion in the cooling pipes, which is from the bombardment of neutrons. So it's absurdly radioactive. The project on the Normandy coast was intended as the French uh, EPR flagship, is now 12 years behind schedule and likely to go a lot longer. The original 3.7 billion budget has ballooned to 21.5 billion budget. It's absurd, right? 12 years behind, almost five times the cost and still, still running high. It makes the claim that yet more nuclear reactors could be running by 2035 beyond laughable. It's, well, it's beyond laughable. Uh, the battery die in my Geiger counter? I guess so, eh? Instead of the, the battery in the cameras, the battery in the Geiger counter. Well, that's been running for probably five months or something on that little 9-volt battery, right? The two EPRs being built in England at the Hinkley Sea site are likely delayed to 2036. Likely? Ten years later than the recently announced 2026 start update, and the tab will soar past 31 billion euros, sterlings. And EDF just got a windfall in the form of $815 million from the UK government, which is nothing, because it's going to cost over $31 billion to build it. Doesn't even cover the taxes. Now here is Macron in Washington talking about a nuclear renaissance. He actually used that word. Yeah, the, well, the industry, don't, don't underestimate crazy. Because that's the nuclear industry got got a um, have cornered the crazy market. Swedish nuclear reactor they operate at half capacity because one of their other reactors is already down. Now this one is running at a time when electricity prices are unusually high. Well, because they put an embargo against commodities from the only country that can supply the volume and caused massive inflation and done it to themselves. It's not, it's not an accident, it's on purpose. It's, like, it's not like they didn't know what was going to happen. So why did they do it? Because Russia's just going to sell it to somebody else. You ain't going to hurt Russia. They done it to screw you and your loved ones and your friends and your families over. They done it to promote nuclear on top of that. Nuclear can't exist, see? And so they needed a crisis. That's the only way nuclear has ever survived was because of crisis. Right, the last time was uh, was it the seventies or eighties during an oil crisis, and nuclear got put on a pedestal, and they had a bit of a renaissance. And that was the last renaissance. Green voters in France broadly supportive of nuclear power. Now I, I find that unbelievably hard to believe. I find that inconceivably hard to believe. And it's from Euro uh, News site. These are notorious pro-nuclear scumbags. You have to be crazy to believe the crazies. <laughs> you have to be incredibly crazy to believe the crazies. Now, uh, I've done research expeditions where I covered the whole coastline year after year after year. And the only way to describe Fukushima's radioactive fallout is an extinction event. It's an ab absolute extinction event. It's not almost an extinction event. It's not maybe going to be an extinction event. D this is an extinction event. The only question anybody on this planet needs to ask themselves is what's more important, the species or nuclear power? Because you can't have both. 
And the, this industry, this, this industry of miseries, this is a misery machine. That's what nuclear is. Like, you know, one of the takeaways I want the world to know clearly about me is that I don't believe in smearing somebody for gain. I Anybody that I smear is, I'm 100% certain that they are what I'm saying they are. I'm not going to take somebody who went and spent decade or two in universities and get an amazing education and because I don't agree with their politics degrade them. I, I would never do that. I'm only going to if somebody's a scumbag and a monster, that's the only reason I'm going to call it to him. And Raphael Grossi is a scumbag and a monster, just like his predecessors. But nobody affords me that. You can find all kinds of rumors about me. You can find all kinds of lies about me. But once you come here and you watch my presentations, you realize quite quickly that that's the industry, the smear me, and they've done a great job of it. Good for them. Bless their hearts. Uh, but this is not a game. And, you know, these attacks, that comes with the territory. And if you can't, if you can't deal with that, you can't be, you can't be, you can't do the things that are necessary. Because that's how they, that's, they're cowards, and that's what cowards do. And uh, it still affects you, it's still, harm, it's still hurtful if somebody would say something like that or, you know, make up things about you in order to degrade you. I don't do that. If I call somebody a degenerate scumbag, it's there, I'll provide you with the documentation to back up those assertions. And I just spent um, two hours showing you unequivocally that nuclear, the pro-nuclear community are degenerate monsters. These are, not figuratively, but these are actual monsters. And right now the high priestess of the monsters in the nuclear industry is this despicable, disgusting parasite known as Raphael Grossi. And I would say to his face in a heartbeat, and, and I can back it up with the documentation, because it's easy, because I'm honest. And that I've been covering this for so long. See, the, the, the truth is not a difficult subject. Not telling the truth is a difficult subject, but telling the truth is not a difficult subject. So when I say all the nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms, well, that's what I mean, right? And the problem with nuclear plants is they're hemorrhaging radiation 24 hours a day into the environment. And so as you eat this, you're bioaccumulating, and every single atom that enters your body is going to be under siege for the rest of your life with white blood cells. That's going to displace the red blood cells. But that's also true for animals and birds and insects and all the species and your children and your friends and your families and your loved ones. And there's no glory in the things I do. There will be no marching bands at the end of it. There will be no celebration. Dana's record of environmental protection will never get mentioned. The industry will cheer the day that I leave, but the media will report on it. I can guarantee you. And in a thousand years, if someone mentions the word Dana Durnford, if there's any pro-nuclear left on the planet, they're going to spit and curse the second they hear my name. Not because I'm a bad person, but because I remind them of how evil and monstrous they actually are. And I am here to go to war for you and your loved ones and your friends, your families, and the species that don't have a voice on this planet. And I, when I say I'm here to go to war, I am here to go to war. I am at war. We are at war, and they are at war with you. And if you don't understand it, you need to come back and watch this again. Because I provided you with the documentation, and so you have no excuse
to not know. I've made sure of it. I've sacrificed it all to make sure that you had the opportunity to know the difference between good and bad. And, and that is 100% bad. <laughs> you are good. And I am done. Let's check the poll one more time. How did we do? And the final word on the poll is, should it be a crime to poison and kill humans with radiation? Because currently it's not. We had 96%. And we had 4% apologists show up. Really, you don't think it should be a crime to poison and kill people? 4% of you don't. Really? Obviously you're pro-nuclear stupid, right? Well, the people that are here are not, and the ones that came through and voted no are. I think that was a great poll. We made it through again. James Lewis donated 130 last night. Thank you, James. We're in desperation mode at this stage, and so... I just wish more people would donate even 5, 10, 15, 20, and we wouldn't have to struggle. I had a major piece of my equipment uh, went down today, and I've been working for hours trying to get that resurrected, and I don't know what to do. It's a $7,000 piece of equipment. <laughs> I got, and I can't send it back to the factory because who knows how much they're going to charge me to fix it. i got to try to resolve it first. It's pretty heartbreaking. So good night for everybody. Hugs for everybody. We'll see everybody. Tomorrow night is the last show of the week, Thursday night, because we start on um, Sundays. And we're super grateful that we got any donations. And if you didn't take down my site last year when I was out looking for spiders, we wouldn't have any issues at all. I had 24,000 subscribers. Whenever we had a problem or we needed to raise the money, we can always do it in a single show. And they've taken that away from me by taking away my site. And this site is censored, and the videos get longer after 12 hours. I'm doing everything I can, but I'm, I'm capable of so much more, but I'm never given the opportunity. And I've struggled for so many years. And everything that I've done is shown to be worthy. I'll see everybody tomorrow night. Hugs for everybody. Thank you for finding time and the courage to hear the truth. Because nuclear industry is not going to have that conversation. There will never be an honest person in the conversation with nuclear industry. It's always controlled opposition like Greenpeace, Ernie Gunnarsson, Helen Callicott, Christopher Busby, and the uh, Irks like that. I do my show late at night, so it's quiet in the background. So it usually starts 10 p.m. my time. So I have a very, 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 very long day every day. I'm proud to have this opportunity to serve you and this planet and the species. And I feel privileged every day to get to do this. Have a great night and a great day tomorrow. We'll see everybody tomorrow night for the last show of the week. Take care.
Hey, we'll see everybody more late from Edge this Friday. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Cost is little and hopefully it goes a long way. Have a great night.